Have you ever wanted to build some really cool invention, but not want to have to deal with other people in order to do so? Well, if you follow the mechatronics and engineering study path, you may very well end up being able to do just that. Or at the very least, learn why it is that you can't. Hello Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. Before we kick this video into high gear, I want to let you guys know in advance that my views here will probably be a bit biased, seeing as I'm graduating, literally the day this video goes live, with an Associate of Applied Sciences degree, majoring in Engineering Technology, Electromechanical Engineering. I'm basically the Kohai to my Mechatronics Engineering Senpai. Anyway, this video we're going to be tackling the subject of what Mechatronics is, what its perks are, and why I even bother to make this video and pick the subject as my major. That clear? Great. Then let's get started. Mechatronics engineering, like any other type of engineering, is a career path that revolves around developing technology to solve problems. I touched on this in my careers for building VR video from March, but this particular engineering subset is kind of a do-it-all path. Rather than focusing specifically on electronics, mechanical systems, or computers, this path combines all of them, giving you the ability to use each of the tool sets to create the solutions to your problems. Being knowledgeable in so many things really does make you into a bit of a one-man army when it comes to creating solutions to problems. You're everything in one, and depending on the scope of the project and the resources available to you, the things that can be built are pretty incredible. I mean, come on. Michael Reeves didn't even go to school for this stuff, and he still wound up building the glorious wonders that are the Screaming Roomba and an elite surgery robot. It's these benefits of the Jack of All Trades class that made me veer towards this path in the first place. I made a video covering it, but my main goal for the past almost 8 years now has been to build a VR rig that would allow me to game in the same way that the Nerve Gear let players do in Sword Art Online. The wish was nice and all, but all I was back then was a wannabe artist that didn't even know the first thing about engineering. Literally, I could spell the word, but that was about it. Seeing as I figured there would be no point in going to college for art, and I couldn't even do so if I wanted to, due to some circumstances surrounding my family, I wound up just picking the option at my local community college that was the closest to fitting the needs of what I wanted to do. All told, it was the perfect fit for a loner like me who didn't have a chance of running a business for this stuff and just wanted to build their own little suit. There totally weren't any cold hard truths or realities to set in after years of juggling manual labor or school to come. No siree. So yeah, of course, everything isn't exactly sugar and rainbows here. There's a very good reason why the building and engineering parts of inventing are usually relegated to montages and flashbacks in movies and TV. It's because they can be very tedious. We're talking that there is a whole lot of math, design work, and resource management involved before so much as a single part is made. Heck, even single parts can be in need of all the steps too. If the hope is to spend all day working on parts, connecting bits and bobs together, or seeing things happen, you're better off becoming a machinist, mechanic, or a welder than you are a technician or engineer. On the note of other roles, it should be pretty obvious, but most large projects leverage the talents of large groupings of people rather than any one individual. The odds are very high that there will be multiple people at a given company in a project along with you, and that the people who opted to specialize a bit more in one area, like mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, will have more in-depth knowledge than you at at least one of your given areas of specialty. A jack of all trades is pretty good when you've only got one, but when they're among many, they will stand as a master of none. One person rarely does a revolution make. The best path to making a great change is to grow and expand, and the option is limited when you have to rely solely on your own laurels. I'm under no delusions that my degree is very significant. For all intents and purposes, it's still just an associates of applied sciences. STEM or not, we'll know what it's good for if I'm working a career job or working at McDonald's in a few months. There's pros and cons to every path in life, and it behooves us to acknowledge them. I know the path I've chosen isn't a guarantee of anything, and I think it's warranted for even my educational superiors to know the matters of theirs. But in the end though, 
if you know what you're looking for and the path you've chosen will take you there, there's nothing really to be at a loss about. While a ton of the work of creating technology can be very design and planning based, that's still very important work, and that can't be ignored in the creation of a project. If the solution is one that you wanted to see brought to the world, then I'm pretty sure the satisfaction of seeing that awesome thing you've dreamed of come to reality should be a pretty good reward at the end of the tunnel. You may have worked on a bolt for six years, but that bolt is now keeping an attack helicopter working, so you be proud, damn it. And the whole matter of specialization being positive or negative here can be pretty relative as it's still important to note that this is still a STEM specialization and that the odds of finding work or doing something useful with that are still pretty damn high. For goodness sake, you can almost literally do a bit of everything. Might as well get some cool thing done with your spare time and sell yourself using that. If Michael Reeves can make a huge company look like garbage in a few months, think what you can do in a few years if you... Okay, let's not try to compare ourselves to awesome people like Michael Reeves. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of tech startups out there that would be willing to jump on a mechatronics engineer and basically turn them into their whole engineering department starting out. Really though, all the credit and business and money talk should be irrelevant in the face of achieving your goals. I set about going to college to encourage the learning of the things I would need to know in order to build my VR rig, since if I was going to go to college anyway, aligning it with my personal and scholastic learning would be the most beneficial path. I'm glad to say it, but it worked exactly as I had hoped. While I'm no genius here, I at the very least feel comfortable knowing that I have enough technical knowledge to develop out the thing I'd want it to do from the start of all this. If you want to talk about being born in the planning and design stage, I've basically been doing that for 8 years now and haven't gotten tired of it, so it really should let you know the kind of mindset that you can have when you're really into this stuff. While the odds of becoming a real life Iron Man are slim, you'd be amazed how much fun can be had with these things if you're up for taking the engineering discipline and putting in some time. If you need some inspiration, see some of the other great YouTube channels in the maker and engineering space, like Michael Reeves' stuff, The Hacksmith, or Adam Savage's Tested. There's tons of fun to be had in the RC community too, so I'll leave you all to Google all this stuff and let YouTube algorithm sama take care of the rest to get your next very expensive hobby settled in. Thank you very much for watching this video everyone. Be sure to rate, comment, share, and subscribe so YouTube algorithm sama brings you back here for more. Till next time my fellow adventurers and dreamers, this has been Gregory, logging out.